Robert F. Kennedy Jr. officially kicked off his 2024 presidential campaign yesterday. In his nearly 50-minute announcement speech, RFK Jr. leaned on his populist roots, promising to eradicate, quote, the corrupt merger of state and corporate power. Most notably, he went after former President Trump, blaming him for the historic lockdowns during the pandemic. Let's watch a bit of that. The worst thing that he did to this country, to our civil rights, to our economy, to the middle class in this country, was a lockdown. Now, President Trump, in fairness, let me just make this point will tell people, well, the lockdown wasn't my idea. It was my bureaucrats rolled me on it. I was saying we shouldn't do it. But that's not a good enough excuse. He was the president of the United States. He, and as Harry Truman said, the buck stops here. On May 2nd, 2020, 600 doctors wrote, signed a letter to President Trump begging him not to do, allow the lockdowns. Kennedy is the second Democrat challenging President Biden, and as we highlighted yesterday, he's earned support from some 14 percent of Biden voters, according to recent polling. Here to discuss his prospects is reporter at Semaphore, Dave Weigel. Welcome, Dave. Good to be here, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so you were on the ground uh, for RFK Jr.'s announcement um, speech. Uh, tell us, you know, what what the crowd was like. I think there's a perception, we've discussed it here, that perhaps he's going to have actually more appeal, given his statements about vaccine and COVID and, you know, lockdowns, uh, that he might actually have more appeal on the right. Was that reflective of the kind of person who showed up? Yeah, I can answer that in two parts. One, it was a, it was a large crowd. This is a a, the Park Plaza Hotel in Boston, a place that a lot of Democrats have, uh, were used for election night events or launch events. Uh, the, the second floor space can fit around a thousand people, and it was pretty full. There was a, a small row of media, uh, and and there were people in, the, in, a, in a front section who paid more money to be there. There were people around the hotel who paid five dollars. Uh, that was uh, that was notable because th this is, I think, you set it up in your intro. Uh, somebody who's received n not as much media attention as your average 14 percent polling candidate i mean i i was there when nikki haley launched she had a lot more media she's not near, mm -hmm. nearly at 14 percent um but the second point you made yes i did find there the people i talked to and i tried you got there about two hours early and talked to people uh who were there some who traveled from nearby some who one who traveled from sacramento one who traveled from new jersey from florida uh it did skew i wouldn't say more conservative uh it skewed more anti-Washington, anti-censorship. Uh, and I need to lecture you guys on how not every, every partisan disagreement fits the scales and fits neatly with people's ideology. There are people who had voted for, I asked everyone, who did you vote for last time? There were some people who wrote in somebody. There was some Trump. There, were, there was some Biden. But there were Biden voters who said, I just wanted the chaos to end. Uh, and and I, I don't like Trump. So I, but I want somebody who tells the truth about the establishment and about media censorship and is not Trump. So this is not, not I think, 90 percent of the electorate, but a chunk of people who might vote in Democratic primary. Absolutely. And very heterodox, probably the most the most ideologically diverse crowd I've seen at one of these launches. Yeah, I completely understand RFK Jr.'s appeal. I, I did a radar on it a week or two mm -hmm. ago, but I am curious about how two aspects of his pitch are resonating with more independent and right-leaning voters. One, the identity as a kind of uh, Kennedy Democrat, very strongly, it's mm -hmm. very prominent on his campaign materials and in some of the remarks that he's been making. And two, the choice to go after Trump over the lockdowns, other candidates who have been teasing or who have announced runs on the right have been very reluctant to go after Trump directly, I think, uh, smartly observing what happened to folks who did so back in 2016. Um, and I'm curious how you think mm -hmm. that went over with the people you spoke to on the ground. Uh, very well. I mean, that was the disappointment from some people I mentioned who voted for Biden because they, they thought Trump was lackluster during the pandemic. Uh, that was, I think, the most motivated, the, the loudest the crowd was getting was when uh, Kennedy was going af after Trump for not not listening to some of the skeptics early in the pandemic who said you don't need to do you don't need to do lockdowns not not federally but as president you should be discouraging people from doing that something Trump did do remember his uh, reopened Michigan tweets in May of, 20, of 2020 mm -hmm. uh, but something that in his book Ron DeSantis will say Trump got rolled on in speeches as you point out that, that DeSantis and other Republicans don't criticize uh, 
that, but what what Kennedy Kennedy kind of looped that into this critique of the pharmaceutical industry, this critique of corporate America, this critique of the NIH, uh, the the EDA, the, the entire federal government, which he called captured. Uh, and his argument was that Trump was the swamp. Trump Trump uh, left the swamp in power. Trump was owned by the swamp during during the pandemic. Tr- uh, Trump let uh, let corporations make billions of dollars in profit with with uh, no bid contracts. That was that was his case. That did connect. And you're right. That's not one that Republicans have been saying a lot. They'll they do more praise for Trump or they'll kind of divert things and say blame his problems on Democrats or or people like Fauci or people like Deborah Burks, not on Trump himself. Kennedy did have more of a co- coherent critique uh, in this speech. I mean, this is this is not everything he's ever said in his career. I mean, the, his his problems with Democrats come from his other critiques of vaccines you didn't make. But his critique of you had a president who now is saying that the lockdowns were bad, but didn't do anything about them in power. Uh, that connected in the room, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's rare, actually, to hear a political figure say, as RFK Jr. Mm-hmm. said, um, Trump gets criticized a lot. Some of it was fair. Some of it was unfair. Like, that's not, that's not a Democratic right. talking point. Actually, one of the only other people I can think of who has... Cu- said a version of that from the Democratic side was Bernie Sanders, who would say that he liked some of, you know, Trump's rhetoric on trade, for instance, or, or you know, help, helping labor. And then but but we'll say, but he's a charlatan and didn't live up to it. You know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But even when Sanders says the first part of that, he gets roasted for it. And that's something that Kennedy, who has been, I think, pretty well ostracized from the Democratic Party's mainstream, doesn't care about. I mean, Sanders is trying to break into the party. Mm-hmm. Kennedy kind of is, too. But Kennedy's going over. I, I do think there will be some overlap in 2016 Bernie voters and, and 2024 Kennedy voters, but specifically the kind of people who just don't don't think the party establishments or rig everything uh, are, are going to gravitate to that message from Kennedy. It overlaps with some of what Marianne Williamson saying. I just kind of refresh myself and listen to her launch speech after Kennedy's that critique of crony capitalism, not not saying we need to replace it with socialism, that we need to replace it with just capitalism that is not rigged. Um, he 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 makes that, but he twins it with, and the government has been uh, captured by these people, and and the, we're we're less healthy. I mean, I think actually the most unique thing he was saying in, in terms of who's speaking in this race uh, was was talking about the, the chronic disease. Why are Americans fatter? Why are we dying younger? Why are there more diseases? Obviously, leading into the controversial stuff, he mentioned autism rates, but didn't talk about his ideas about vaccine, vaccines causing them. Um, but by that sort of stuff, there are things that normal people who are not political junkies are concerned about. And if they hear somebody talking about them, I do think it clicks. Uh, I, I think he, the parts, the highlights of that speech, maybe not all an hour and 58 minutes, but what you're talking about, yeah, that's something that a lot of established political figures might not want to edge into, especially the part about Trump, because they know they're going to get blown up by a media that they generally would like to be on the right side of. And Kennedy does not care. Yeah, it is interesting that uh, Marianne's speech did have a lot of those very same notes, really strong, actually, mm-hmm. um, con- condemnations of uh, the swamp, Washington, et cetera. It is, it, it is interesting to me the extent to which a lot of the left seems to be very skeptical of Marianne, despite that, because of her choice to run within the Democratic Party. And it doesn't seem to me at mm-hmm. this point that RFK Jr. has been hit with that same suspicion. You know, why are you trying to work with the, the inside? Um, how can we believe that you won't succumb to the forces within the Democratic Party? Why do you think the Democratic Party is going to give you a fair shot after what we've seen before with Marianne's last mm-hmm. run or with Bernie's last two runs? What do you make of that? Yeah, he hasn't litigated as much as Marianne has. I mean, we don't know if the Democrats are going to sanction debates. Let's say it's let's say this is it. It's Joe Biden. It's Marianne Williamson. It's RFK. Uh, the, 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 and they've not been clear yet if they would allow debates. Now, there's not the same talk you had with Republicans in 2020 where they literally canceled primaries, just gave the delegates to um, to Donald Trump. Uh, but when I talked to state party chairs, they said, well, anyone can show up. It's It's a weird... The attitude's very different than Democrats, even in 2016, certainly 2016, even in 2020. There's a lot more worry about, oh, Tulsi Gabbard's going to get on stage and she's going to be a problem. I've, I've not detected that from Democrats this time. There is a lot of confidence, I think, in, I wouldn't even say epistemic closure, but like that the, they ele- their electorate was going to renominate Joe Biden and that these opinions that we've been talking about, uh, these views that RFK Jr. has, they're just not worth dealing with because those are not... There's maybe your voters are going to show up in the New Hampshire primary, but they're not going to be, re- be relevant down the line. Now, they've not thought deeply about Kenny. They love, they love to just not t- have to take him seriously. I think if he, if he got a lot of traction, you hear about stuff he tried to preempt, which is 
you know, he had a very, very checkered youth before he was a serious environmental lawyer, you know, arrested for heroin possession, things like that. Um, but at the moment, he's kind of floating because he's just he just is able to to deliver his message to a crowd that doesn't care about the Democratic Party, doesn't care about the media, even the media in the room. I saw CNN. I saw The New York Times, um, not every big media outlet, but I saw a lot of very popular sh- podcasts and, and streaming shows um, that I, I mean, some of them I had some I had to have them point out to me. Who is that? <laughs> but people that people have built followings during the pandemic that I think are going to uh, be interested in his campaign even if he never makes it onto, you know, yeah. the front page of a newspaper or makes it on, uh, onto a, a Sunday show. I yeah, think he's, he's reaching to a different audience. That's not a majority, but it's, it is, that is outside well, politics, outside normal politics that doesn't care about the process as much. Certainly. And your point about the lack of media coverage of him versus the media attention being paid to someone like Nikki Haley, who is far, far mm-hmm. more out of it or, you know, not a serious threat to Trump or DeSantis um, compared mm-hmm. to it's, it's, it was a very, very brilliant observation on your part. Thank you so much, Dave, for being here and sharing uh, your reporting with us. Good to be here. Thanks for having me.